Hey, I'm Shane Smith, the owner of Genesis Off-Road. This is our installation video for our dual battery system for the Diesel Gladiator. So before we jump into the install, let's just walk back here. I'm going to show you how it looks. Hey, wait, Shane, are, are we not working under the hood? No, the dual battery system is not under the hood. It is physically impossible. There's no room under the hood. The dual battery system is going to have to go under the back seat. All right, guys, we got to tear everything down, reset it in the back, lights, cameras, everything. Okay, as I was saying, let me show you what this is gonna look like under here before we get started. So here under the seat, you can see we've got an extra battery and the power hub and this new storage box to hold everything securely in place. Okay, so now you can see what this is gonna look like. Let's get started on the install. Under your back seats, some Gladiators have this factory plastic storage box. Now we're not gonna be able to use this one. The reason we can't use this is because it's so thick, it's gonna raise our battery up a little bit. So we're gonna have to pull this one out. So we're gonna grab a 10 millimeter ratchet and pull these four bolts out. Now we'll just take this plastic tub out and let's go ahead and pull the uh, floor liners out of here too. And then also this little box under the seat that holds your hardware when you take your doors off. We're gonna pull this out of here too. Get this out of our way with a 10 millimeter. Okay, with the plastic factory tray out of the way, now we're gonna come over to the driver's side and we're gonna bring in the power hub. So the long positive wire is gonna end up going under the carpet. We're gonna come over here underneath this panel. We're gonna drill a hole uh, and run this, the cable along the frame rail up to the engine bay. The ground wire is gonna come over to a factory chassis ground that's located right behind this panel. So let's start taking these pieces off and we'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna pop this plastic panel off right here. So you kind of grab it under here and pull out like this and it'll pop right off. These, these two pieces by the front door actually snap together. Then we're gonna take off the seat belt access door right here. I'll have to get a little pry tool. There it goes. Then we're gonna pop it loose from over on this side as well. And now inside of this little access door, you'll see it's cut to fit around the seat belt. So we'll move the seat belt down out of the way like this. Get it over that. And that piece will come off. Okay, so then our ground wire is gonna come under the carpet through here and come up to the factory ground point right behind this trim panel. Right at this point, you're gonna find a factory ground point. There's already a ground cable on there. We're gonna remove that nut with a 10 millimeter. Okay, save this nut, we're gonna reuse that. Now we're gonna cut our cable ties and start routing our wires. We'll uncoil these wires. We can pull this carpet back from under the, the seat mount brackets right here just a little bit. I like to run the, these wires right through here. It's an easy way to do it. Let's just run this one right here for the moment. We're gonna uncoil. This is the, the long cable that's gonna go up to our cranking battery. And this has got an inline fuse on it. So in order to get this through the body, let's just remove our wire from that fuse. Hang on to that nut right there for a minute. Set that out of the way. We'll put this back on there when we get under the hood. Okay, so let's take our positive wire and we're gonna go through that same spot to get behind the carpet and just pull all this slack through here. Okay, so the power hub is gonna end up sitting right about here, like that. Okay, so we're gonna route our positive wire under the carpet, right here close to the door, over here towards our B-pillar. So right here under the B-pillar, there's a nice flat spot on the floor. You can kind of pull your carpet back a little bit to see that if you want to. But right here is a good spot for running our heavy cable through the floor. So we're gonna take a center punch and mark that spot. And then we'll take our drill bit and we're gonna drill that out. Okay, now that we got the hole drilled and cleaned up, clean up our shavings here a little bit, uh, we're gonna touch up that hole with a little touch up paint to protect the, that raw material. So put a little touch up paint on there. Okay, so before we put the wire through our new hole, let's go ahead and slide on the grommet onto the wire. And we're just gonna push that all the way up. So just back it all the way up to where it's aligned with the back door for right now. And we'll come back and put the grommet in the hole later. So let's go ahead and feed the wire through the hole. This is gonna come out on the ground below us. Let's go ahead and pull all this slack through. 
Okay, so now let's lay down under the vehicle and I'll show you how to run the positive cable along the frame rail and up into the engine bay. Okay, so we're coming down right next to this big body mount. So we're gonna go over the top of this body mount, fish our cable along the top of the frame rail. And we're gonna come towards the front and we're gonna go over the frame rail and the cable will come out right through here and we're gonna pull our slack all the way out right through here. Okay, we got all the slack out. Now you see this, uh, this insulated bundle of wires running along the frame rail. Uh, we're gonna come back, once we get the wire up in there, up in the engine bay, we're gonna come back and zip tie to this bundle. But let's just get our wire through here first. And we're gonna go through here. Again, we're following this insulated wire bundle. And then now we're gonna turn and go up by the firewall. And let's just push this wire up as high as we can reach. And it's gonna come out close to the brake booster. Okay, now back up top, we're gonna reach our hand down in here next to the fluid reservoir bottle. Grab that slack that we pushed up and route it right up through here. Pull all this slack up. And then we're gonna go over the top of this fluid bottle to reach our battery over there. And the reason I'm going over the top of the bottle like this is because I wanna keep this wire away from our steering column that's turning. So I'm gonna use, a, I'm gonna grab a zip tie here I'm gonna put a couple of zip ties onto this line right here to keep that securely away from our steering column. And then I'm gonna put another zip tie up top here on this little bracket, just to hold that wire in place. Okay, so we're just gonna leave this wire laying over here close to the battery. We're not gonna hook that up yet because we don't want hot power going to the back yet. We'll come back and do that last. Okay, now back onto the back seat. Let's go ahead and route our ground cable behind the trim panel to that factory ground stud. Just gonna put that on there right there. And we'll put our factory nut back in place. Okay, before we tighten that down, let's just make sure our cable is routed nice and neatly through here, down through this trim panel. And if you look closely in here, you'll notice how this uh, trim snaps in place. So we just make sure our wire is not gonna be interfering with how the panel is reattaching. And now we'll go ahead and tighten down that nut. And then we can start reattaching this trim panel. Right about there. There we go. Okay, with the ground wire in place, we're just gonna kind of get these wires laid down here nice and neatly under the carpet and routing over here. Now we're ready to go ahead and put this grommet in place. So let's slide that down. And I'm gonna hit that with a little WD-40 again to make it a little bit easier to slide on the wire and a little bit easier to get in the in that hole right there. Okay, then you can reach underneath the vehicle and help pry that grommet into place. All right, now I can tell from the bottom side that the grommet is all the way through the hole and through that panel. Now, if you're also installing some other accessories and you need to run your wires through here, go ahead and do those if you can. Uh, if you need to come back later, it's real easy to pull this carpet back out of the way to run your accessory wires in here to the bus bars. But I'm gonna get these wires laid out nice and neatly in here. There we go. And then tuck our carpet back underneath the seat brackets and under the trim. We'll get that carpet laying as flat as we can so our floor mats will snap back in place. Okay, now we're ready to put the storage box in place in here and we'll, we'll kind of slide it up underneath the power hub. We're gonna reuse those factory mounting points. Let's get the tray in place. Over on this side, we're gonna use the factory bolt in the hole closest to the door. And we're gonna use a factory bolt over here closest to this door. We'll leave those kind of loose for the moment. Now the other two, this factory mounting bolt right here, if you're using a larger battery, this may be covered up. So in your hardware baggie, we have a low profile Allen head button head bolt. So we'll put that one here. And then last, we'll kind of move our power hub into position, pull our wires up a little bit, and we're gonna use the last bolt to hold down the power hub. Okay, now we'll grab the 10 millimeter bolts from the hardware baggie, and we'll bolt down the power hub to the tray. And we'll tighten those up with a 10 millimeter. Okay, with that in place, now we can go ahead and finish tightening up the bolts for the tray. And we'll use an Allen wrench to tighten up this one. 
Okay, now that we're done with the power hub, let's just go ahead and get our trim piece back in place. And we're gonna put our seat belt, put this behind our seat belt harness, and then through here, tuck this up underneath this trim, come up to the front, we're gonna tuck this one under this trim, and these pieces will snap back together with two snaps right there. Same with this one, two little clips that hold these in place. Like that, we'll get this lined up. Everything should just pop right in here. We'll put this extra one, put this one back on. And don't forget about your seatbelt cover. Okay, with our plastic trim back in place, we're done on this side. Let's move over to the passenger side and we'll install the battery brackets. Okay, so now on the passenger side, we've got our adjustable battery brackets here. So let's go ahead and grab our battery. Okay, so we're gonna be using a Group 34 from Full Throttle in our Jeep today. Uh, so there's a lots of options to see the full list of batteries that's compatible that'll fit under here. Just check out our website. So we're gonna put the battery brackets on top of here. It goes here, the other one on this side. So we're gonna push the brackets together and we'll just go ahead and start the nuts on top of the brackets to hold them in place. And then the brackets are also adjustable front to back. We slide this one on the front, start the nut right there. Take our other one, put it on the other side. And we're just gonna kinda get those started a little bit. We'll come back and tighten those up later. Now we'll use the 10 millimeter bolts from the hardware baggie to secure the brackets down to the tray. Now you've got some adjustability. So I'm gonna slide it all the way this way, make sure we can catch the, the bolts in here. Start these bolts on this side. Okay, then we'll grab our 10 millimeter and tighten those up. Now to tighten these brackets in place, I wanna squeeze the brackets this way and kind of hold that for a second. And we're gonna tighten up the top ones first. And then when we got our uh, left and right adjustment where we want it, then we can go ahead and tighten up the, these down low. Okay, then we'll tighten up these brackets right here. We're just gonna hold the brackets facing this way and then tighten up our, our nuts. Now we can hook up the wires for the battery. Okay, we're gonna hook up our positive first on the regular Group 34 battery. Put our cover back in place and then we'll hook up the ground. And I can tell, you can see there's a little space between the post and the, and the clamp, so I'm gonna loosen this up and make sure that's seated all the way to the bottom so our clamps don't come loose. There we go. I'll tighten that one with a half inch. Now our battery's installed. I'm just gonna kind of route my wires a little bit nicer. Now, if you wanna put that little storage box back in here that holds your door hinge hardware you can if you want to i think it's kind of useless myself so i'm just going to leave it off okay i'm gonna put my floor mats back in okay so we've got everything mounted under the seat now let's just go back up and, and hook up that power wire to the cranking battery okay now back under the hood we're going to go ahead and reattach our high amp fuse onto the end of our wire just take that nut off and put that back on there and then we're going to pull our little cover back we're gonna remove this nut off the post clamp with a 12 millimeter. And the new fuse is gonna go right onto that stud and put the nut right back on there. Also, let's make sure this nut is nice and tight with a 13 millimeter. Now, if you'd like to take a razor blade and slice this little uh, factory post clamp cover right here so that you can groom that cover back into place. You can do that. Okay, let's come back and just run a few zip ties to secure our wire to that factory bundle. And I've got the wire tucked back behind there. It's actually on top of this and, and on top of the frame. And last, we're just gonna secure this cable in place with our last zip tie. Okay, so 
that's all under the hood. This should be your last connection that you make because we don't want that wire being hot under the back seat. And now that everything's done, let's go back here and we'll kind of wrap up. Okay, so that's our dual battery system for the diesel Gladiator. So you can see here, you know, I know we're using some of this space under the back seat that you guys might be using for tool bags or air compressors or diaper bags or toys or whatever, but we really have no other option. This is just the only spot that we have on this vehicle to, to put the batteries safely and out of the way. You still have room over here on the driver's side. You can mount some other accessories. If you're ready to hook up some uh, accessory wires, just route your wires inside the vehicle and under the carpet to our bus bars and your positive wires will go on any of these three studs here. Uh, so you got some flexibility with hooking up your accessories. You also have a couple of small terminals here for your smaller gauge wires. Your ground connection is gonna go over here. So anything you wire up there will run from your accessory battery and not drain down your cranking battery. Okay, so that's the whole idea of our system, right? We wanna make sure you can always start the engine. Now, if you hop in and your cranking battery is too low for whatever reason, you can't start the engine, you can reach back here, reach under the seat and hit the boost button right here, change that to on, and that will jumpstart you from the power in your second battery. Now, if you need to manually separate the batteries, you can do that also. Just flip the switch the other way to the off position, and that will leave the batteries separated from each other. So that means you can run everything off of here and it will not touch your cranking battery, but also while it's in that off position, your engine will not be charging this battery. So just be aware of that. Usually you'll just leave the switch in the auto position in the center. Okay, so that's our dual battery system, remotely mounted under the back seat. Fold our seats down and you don't even know what's under there. Hey, I hope that video helped you out. If it was helpful to you, please hit the subscribe button and like this video, that really does help us out. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment in the comment section down below or send us an email. And remember, it all starts with power.